So please meet Dean Newland. Dean is the CEO of Mission Facilitators International, a 25-year-old boutique team-based uh, development firm based in Phoenix and also in Bend, Oregon. He has developed and facilitated hundreds of training programs to, from small to large companies for and also nonprofit government agencies and school systems across the U.S. and in 19 different countries. He is certified in several assessment tools and has written columns and white papers um, along the leadership arena. So we're proud to bring um, his teaching to Oregon State University. Thanks, Dean, for being here. Uh, thanks, Melanie. I'm really glad to be here, too. I would love to show them your video. Let me make sure this is going to work okay. Companies are facing three big issues right now. One, a lot of their employees are disengaged. Two, a lot of those employees are looking for other work. And three, it's getting harder and harder to find good people. So this positive spin right now is that we have several different generations all working together alongside. We have neuroscience now for the first time to really begin to understand where trust resides in the brain. And if we understand that part, we can actually create conversations that make that kind of chemical reaction take place. And then three, we've also got the ability to measure human behavior in ways we never did before. And for the first time, we can actually start to make the argument, how does training and development and coaching actually create better engagement, more productivity, uh, less waste, and overall bottom line results? You create bottom line results by attracting and retaining top talent, developing learning cultures, tapping into individual team and organizational purpose, which creates aligned engagement. And aligned engagement creates bottom line results. We help the individual, the team, and the organization identify its purpose and align them all together. Your team does not retain its learning through knowledge. Read a book watch a TED Talk, see a speaker. They retain their learning through an experience. And that's what we do at Mission Facilitators. We create experience. We create the space for people to take the knowledge that they have and to be able to translate it into something much more visceral. We're very much a learn by doing organization. And that's what we do with you and your teams. We believe that transformation is a journey. And our work is inspired by age old wisdom combined with modern day understanding of adult learning and neuroscience. We would love to embark on that journey with you. Thank you so much for that great video. No, you're very welcome. We had that done by a local company in Bend and we're still tweaking it a bit, but I think it's gonna be a good way of kind of telling our story. So thanks for showing that. So please talk a little bit about the leadership development curriculum and um, the expectations for the upcoming courses. You bet, I know we've got three, Melanie, we're gonna talk about today. And just to highlight everybody who happens to be on this call, maybe the first thing I'd ask you to think about is, you know, you've obviously taken an hour of your day or 45 minutes to be a part of this webinar. What is one thing that you would hope to come away from this? Is there a particular tip or tool that would make your leadership more effective, whether it's a student, whether it's a teacher, whether you're working for a company, whether you own a company, you know, what's the burning platform? And maybe we can get a little bit of traction on this in this short amount of time. As this little video had just sort of described, I think that there's three things that we're sort of facing right now in terms of learning and development. There's three headwinds, but also there's three really big opportunities. Um, the headwinds that I see is that we have um, really VUCA, ADD, and multi-generational employees. Let me explain that. VUCA stands for volatility, uncertainty, chaos, and ambiguity. It was a military term that's been used for years, and we're beginning to now hear it in the business sector. And basically what it's describing is this incredible amount of constant change that's taking place, not only in business, but in all aspects of society. And they've been measuring this, and they're saying that this particular type of chaos that this term indicates is happening more often to the point where it's almost like the new normal. So it's very disruptive and obviously people have a hard time dealing with massive amounts of change. The other headwind I think we deal with is what I kind of call is this this ADD mindset. Uh, we have so many billions of bits of information coming at us every day, every hour, that most of our attention is trying to be able to ignore most of it and focus on just a few things that are a priority. 
And so it's really becoming that our attention span is getting many, uh, much more short. Uh, and we finish the day, whether it's at school or at work or what have you, and wonder what is it that we actually got accomplished? And that is due to the fact that we're distracted so much and then we're not present by very, with very many things. And so this ADD kind of mindset is really becoming really uh, a metaphor for this attention deficit that's taking place. And then the third thing that I think is also unique to this kind of time and place in our society is, is we have for the first time in a long time, or maybe even ever, we have potentially grandfather working alongside with granddaughter in the same company. And each of these different types of generations, whether they be um, uh, the, uh, the Gen Xers, or the Gen Yers, or the baby boomers, or what have you, they all have their unique perspective on what they need. They all have a different type of way in which they make decisions, how they like to receive information, how they like to give information, how, what motivates them, how they view work, how they self-actualize, all those sort of things. And they all are coming together in this big, huge employee soup, and we as leaders are trying to find a way to navigate around that. So these are pretty big challenges. However, on the other side of the ledger, I think, in terms of what's going on, is that we have really a very big opportunity here that I think is unprecedented. And I think that those things that we're seeing now in terms of the work that I'm seeing and reading about is that we alerted to this in the video, is that neuroscience is really now beginning to be a tool for leadership development and employee development. And we're finally being able to understand where does trust reside in the brain where does fear reside in the brain? And couldn't we create intentionally conversations that will allow people to trust us and to elevate the conversation? Uh, there was a quote that I once heard that said that friendships, families, teams, companies, organizations, and even countries grow and die one conversation at a time. And if that's the case, and I do think there's something to that quote, then our job as leaders and employees is hopefully to, that we can evolve and master the art of the conversation. And then the other thing that I think is really different now that we haven't had in a long time, and I certainly have dealt with this, and I'm sure Melanie, you have as well, and anybody who's in the industry of learning and development is, you always ask the question, I'm glad we had this offsite, I'm glad we did this training, but how do we measure results? What's the ROI? And especially with people who are more um, factual in their thinking, they wanna know, if I spend this amount of money, am I gonna get some sort of an outcome that makes sense? I think that what's happening now is that there's a lot more emphasis in being able to develop tools to measure learning effectiveness. In fact, our team right now is going through a training program specifically on that. It's called Coaching for ROI, and it's providing us uh, some brand new tools around being able to connect the dots between human development, leadership development, and how it's affecting teams, productivity, engagement, retention, even things like healthcare. And we're being able to have a line of sight to those things that are financial in nature. It's not just a soft skill. These are actually crucial business-related activities that will move the needle. And then I think the last thing that's really an amazing opportunity right now that we're all sort of facing is around this need for purpose. Um, you know, when my father grew up and he went to school and he went to the uh, Minneapolis Star Tribune and was a reporter for 35 years, purpose wasn't as big of a deal back then. It was a job you had, you had a duty, you wanted to support your family. But now I think a lot of people, certainly the younger generation coming into the workforce, they want to self-actualize. They want work to be not just a paycheck, but they want to do something that is valuable and meaningful and maybe even changes their community and the world. And on the other end of the, uh, the, the age spectrum, baby boomers are now saying, you know what, I don't know if I want to retire quite yet. You know, so if I do want to stay in the workforce, maybe it's half time or what have you, I want to do it, do something that's meaningful and purposeful. So this third piece that I think is a unique opportunity is around people are wanting to do meaningful work. They want their work to be purpose driven. And so that's really what we are often all about is around creating purpose driven leaders, teams, and organizations. It's not just because it's a trend. I think it's because it's something that we've always stood for. 